This is Movie Tone. Lionel Gamlin reporting. <laughs> Deep in the back blocks of Australia, far beyond Woomera itself, the base of operations was established. Uninviting, trackless country this, where every vehicle must carry water and stores enough for twice the time scheduled for each round trip. Australian servicemen and scientists played a big part in the operation, which included the construction of a tower, the tower that vanished instantly when the atomic weapon was exploded on it. Sir William Penny, who directed the scientific preparations, is seen arriving and donning suitable headgear for the daytime heat. The temperature, incidentally, varies from over 100 degrees by day to freezing point at night. Dust and sandstorms are a feature of the weather in these parts, and it was essential that exactly the right conditions should prevail for the experiment. There was a wait of about 10 days while weather balloons and other devices determined the right moment for the explosion. <laughs> Special cameras were set up, some of them built to make exposures at the rate of 100,000 a second. Scientific apparatus, indeed, had to be installed to register each vital detail of the effects of Britain's latest atomic weapon. And then, as the time drew near, flashing lights showed that every item of apparatus was ready to carry out tasks which, in some cases, were over in a millionth of a second. Rings of light radiating from the central fireball seem to be a variation on the atomic theme. On this occasion, moreover, rockets were fired off with equipment to obtain radioactive samples for later examination. And now, from one of the cameras, a slow-motion analysis of the explosion. All these pictures, by the way, for security reasons, have only just been released. Finally, another angle on the burst. Sir William Penny waits till the first blinding flash is over before turning to look. Yes, exactly according to plan. It's okay. 